One more year, working the beet harvest. This is basically the uh, receiving station, Reynolds receiving station. You can see in the background, you've got different pilers. I work on piler one, which is down this lane right here. Okay, I'm operating the CAT 262D3 skid steer, rubber wheels instead of tracks. It's got four attachments, a small bucket, a large bucket, a forklift, and a stinger. And I'll show you the operation of the buckets and the stinger. The forklift is just to move the uh, porta potty. And I usually keep my windshield as clean as possible because the last thing I want to do is reach out and touch somebody in this thing. So I try to keep the windshield as clean as possible. And tonight I'm going to capture some POV of me putting some culvert down and explain the reason behind it and also moving some dirt. So like I said, I've got three implements. There's the large bucket and the stinger, and I've got the small bucket on. And I've got to go down here and drop one, pick up the other. In this case, I'm going to pick up the stinger so that I can lay some culvert. And I'm going to get a little bit of POV on that as well. And as you can see off in the distance, and I'll get a little closer here in a second, but all of this culvert in front of me, 
is what I'm picking up and it's laid out in a row connected to a blower so that when it sits over the winter that cold air blowing through it it's going to keep the pile frozen and we pile in October and they pick up the pile basically bring it to uh, the sugar factory crystal sugar factory and uh, turn it into sugar all right so as you can see those rows are set up and it's starting to spill over the last row and coming up to the row that I just put down so I've got to come over here and finish up this row and then get a back row behind it and the whole time I'm looking in my rear view camera to make sure that there are no trucks coming which in this case there is a truck that is uh, getting his tear dirt right now and so I'm looking at him he's backing up so he's gonna be turning around so I just got to move myself around out of the way in this case the skid steer with the stinger is about the length of one culvert, which I'm going to be putting in this area where I'm sitting right now, so I'm definitely out of the way. We've got six culverts that are going to connect to the one that I'm pointing at right now. Six culverts that uh, connect on this side. I usually put four, three or four, depending on how rushed I am, which just puts it out of the way of the trucks as they're turning around. But I've got to get them in to make sure that the beets don't spill over. As you can see, it's, well, it's pretty close to spilling over right now, but the uh, piler moves, well, I should say the boom on the piler moves right left to fill the pile. It's 30 feet high right now and about, well, I don't know, about 100 or so feet wide. Okay, get that culvert in. As you can see, it's a little bit of a touch thing. You get a feel for it. And hope the camera doesn't fall. Again, it got two down. Two to go, and then I'm going to move these other two out of the way so I can backfill this uh, junction that's sitting right next to the stack. There's a base on the bottom of these culverts that has to be down, and that basically provides a little bit of stability. You can kind of see it on the, uh, well, it's kind of hard to see from this angle, but to the right, on the very bottom of that culvert there, there is a base that keeps it level and allows for stability. And then of course the backfill keeps it from blowing out. And it, a lot of times the pile trickles pretty slow. So back backfilling is just to be safe. If the pile is slowly coming down, kind of cascading down, then it's not gonna blow out. But if you get a big cascade, if you get a bunch of beats coming down, each one of those beats are heavy. I, I, have had, held one like when I did the video from last year. I held one in my hand. I have a picture of one in my hand. It's about the size of a football, maybe a little bigger. And uh, I'd say it probably weighs a, a good seven or eight pounds each beat. Now, of course, some are bigger than others, but uh, in this case, if you take even just an average of six or eight pounds. Okay, you can see how that one just rolled on me. That means that it's not level. So I've got to push it down. See how it popped into place and now it's sitting on that base? That uh, gives me an opportunity to set it down level. Which again, provides a little bit more support. See, you can imagine if you've got uh, an average of about five or six pounds or more, but five or an average of about six pounds per beat, and you've got several hundred beats falling in a cascade all at the same time, it's going to push one of these culverts, even though they are very heavy. It's 
kind of funny. One of the, uh, in fact, the boom operator last night was seeing that I was struggling a little bit, like I did earlier on that one uh, where I flipped it over, you know, flipped it onto its base. And in this case, it was really more of a, it was upside down. The base was actually straight up, so it wasn't anywhere near the base. And she saw that I was struggling with it a little bit. She came over to ask me if I needed some help, and I, I kind of laughed. I said, you're more than welcome to try, but it's pretty heavy. And, uh, of course, later on I told her, I said, you know, I I, uh, I would have been kind of scared if you'd have impressed, obviously, but kind of scared if you'd have been able to, to move it because she was trying to move one that's like this one that I'm picking up right now. And this thing weighs several hundred pounds. And here in a second, I'm going to need to call Brad once I get this one set and I get some uh, backfill in. I'm going to need to call Brad because Brad is my uh, night supervisor. I'm going to need to call him and let him know because you can see the cord there on the ground that runs all the way out that way and it connects to the uh, piler straight ahead on that corner right there where that truck's rolling up. And I can't lay culvert on top of that cord. We won't be able to get the cord itself pretty heavy. We definitely won't be able to get it moved after. So I'm going to need to call him and let him know that after this row, the row that's just to my left, is going to be the next row that I'm going to need to put up. Alright, that's enough on this. This is basically just the same thing over and over again. I just wanted to show a little POV on laying the pole. Yeah, I've got the uh, big bucket on. I told you there's two size buckets. I like to use the small bucket for cleaning unless there's just a, a lot to pick up. But uh, I've got the big bucket on so that I can put the uh, backfill beans and since he's done there I'm going to go back over here on this corner and uh, backfill that uh, first junction. She trusts me obviously because she's not moving. <laughs> No, I was saying that's a that's a sign of trust. You, you trust me, you know I'm not gonna hit you. Get that close. <laughs> this guy's uh, real good. <laughs> He's a. Uh, I don't know if you saw him with the camera there, but he he I'll swing around that way. He he cleans he cleans almost as much as I do as far as picking up dirt, which makes the job easier. He's also a, a, a boom operator. Guy right there in front of you. He's also a boom operator. And uh, so again, backfilling. You get the junctions, you drop the beats down. What that does is that just provides a little bit of uh, weight on that junction. Again, so it doesn't blow out. And this, just like the other, laying the uh, Kind of a monotonous task. You just come in, pick up beats, swing around, and drop them on the junction. Now, one thing I will say is it's it's very similar to a choreographed dance because I've got to be able to keep an eye not only on everybody around me so that I don't hit anybody, but I've also got to be able to watch the trucks as they come and go like the truck that just left on the side that I'm on, so I know that the other side is now dumping, and then this side will dump. That gives me a little bit of time on this side, and as I see the uh, dump go down, which I'll swing to the left, you can see the uh, dump going up, the trailer going up, and uh, so as I see that trailer going down, I know that it takes a little bit of time for the trailer to go down. And then also they go in and they pick up their tear dirt, their dirt, which is collected by the machine. You can see the trailer's up right there. So he's getting ready. And on the other side, he's finished. 
which is to say that now they are collecting on this side, the side that I'm backfilling, and you can see the truck back, the one that's on the other side, is now getting his tear dirt. The uh, tear dirt comes off of that conveyor right in front of me. The truck pulls up after they dump their beans, the truck pulls up. And the sample taker on the ground gets the truck into position. Usually they pull it forward a little bit more. I'm not sure what she did. There's plenty of room. That's why I leave that uh, set of culverts, the last two, out so that they can move forward. And then you can see the dirt that came off of his trailer with the beats getting put back in his trailer. And like I said, if I was backfilling on the other side, I would be backfilling while he's getting his dirt. But now I'm just going to move out of the way. Like I said, this is kind of what I'm talking about as far as the choreographed in. I know what they're going to do. Most of the drivers, when you get into the season this far, pretty much know what I'm going to do. So we stay out of each other's way. And again, like I said, I just got to make sure that I watch out for people around me as I continue to watch the trucks move around me. Now this last backfill is kind of important because if I don't catch, which I haven't missed it yet, but if I don't catch the Tyler uh, cascading down and I don't get that junction set up as quickly as possible, I put a little bit of backfill here on this one and on the other side, there's the fourth one on this side, the third one on the other side, just like I do in the end, which I'm going to put here in a second, just like I do on that end one, because as the beats cascade over, like you can see now the top of the culvert to the right and the left, as those beats cascade down, they can push that last junction out of the way, which is to say that it would basically break the uh, seal of that particular section. Again, as the piler moves back, just got to kind of carefully work my way underneath when the piler's at 30 feet. It gives me a little bit more distance above my head, and I've got a pretty good idea of the uh, parameters of this skid steer, its height and its width and its length, so that I can position myself carefully. Primarily because the guys that are doing samples on the side that I'm facing now have to go across to the other side, which is to your left. And I try to keep this as clear as possible so that they don't have to either walk through the dirt or walk around it. I get the front cleaned up and then drive it down here create a pile. We'll get through this weekend and we'll finish up probably sometime this next week. I'd love it if we made it into the weekend next weekend as well, but I'm not holding my breath. And one of the jobs that I need to do is to clean off the end dump of the loader. So I pull off the beats that accumulate on the ramp and then if she lowers the ramp and there's mud on it then I can get up there and get the mud off just so that the beats don't stick to it like you can see there the beats don't stick to it and uh, we get more of a more of a load in truckers get a little impatient sometimes especially if they're in a hurry and they were 
where are our next in line? They're like, why do I have to wait for this? But it is important, it is necessary. Again, so that we can uh, keep it clean. Try to do it as quickly as possible, but I got to be careful too not to mess up the uh, piler and get out of their way. After the trucks get their tear dirt and back up, I like to uh, clean up a little bit in front of the end dump and then also make a courtesy sweep through the uh, area where they pick up their tear dirt just to kind of help a little bit I mean I can't get it all and a lot of times there's not a lot but uh, I definitely try to help out if I can So high, trusting our wings to fly. Sometimes we're crashing down, but we get up and start from the ground. And I, I really wanna know, really wanna know if I let figure out where the road goes. Falling down, I will keep on searching for my highs You can say I lost my mind, I will keep on holding my head high Even if the sky is falling down Can you dig it, fool? Dig it, dig it, dig it, dig it, dig it. 